Hello and welcome to another model building workshop and today we're going to be looking at the T-80 light tank, the Russian uh, light tank of World War II, not the T-80 that we know of as a uh, current battle tank that the Russians are using. So this is an older one from 1944-45. So this was the last in a series of uh, Russian light tanks made during the 30s and 40s that whole World War II period. This is the last one they put out. And basically this is a upgrade to the T-70 or T-70M, thus the T-80. So this has a few different features. Notably the turret is different from the, uh, from the older T-70. And one thing you're gonna see right away is look at the elevation of the cannon. And this is something that the high command for the Soviet Union wanted at the time because as the uh, Red Army was rolling into Eastern Europe and into the cities like uh, throughout Hungary, Poland and whatnot, they needed um, something that could fire up high enough to hit the upper floors of uh, apartment buildings and other high rise type buildings that they were coming across in street fighting. Because uh, other light tanks, other tanks <laughs> had no no way they could they could elevate the gun high enough. So this uh, became useful in urban fighting. So they wanted something that could get get to those pockets of resistance, unlike say the fourth floor of a building, um, other than just wiping out the building <laughs> completely. Uh, so that was a feature that came across on the T80. So this is a mini art kit. And, you know, I'm working on this. Not quite done, almost. So, from mini art from the Ukraine. And this is one, uh, I don't remember what year this came out. I don't think it's got a date on this. But this was the, uh, you know, it says special edition version from mini art. So, I would say a few years ago. Because um, I did the T70, which was a lot of fun to build. And, uh, this one was as well and this didn't come with some extra parts and stuff there's your part breakdown there and here you look at what is involved with the assembly which is not too terrible um i'm finding some of the new stuff oh boy it's a lot of there we go <laughs> the computer doesn't always like the lighting down here um you can see some of the parts blow ups and breakdowns for the assembly. There's not a whole lot to this. Pretty straightforward. Typical of the Russian tanks in that period, there are a lot of uh, railings and handrails so the infantry could grab a ride when they needed it. So that gets a little fiddly. Uh, it's got some photo etched, but not much. Just basically the uh, yeah, a couple of grills on the rear and on the side and that's pretty much that so yeah pretty straightforward assembly and uh, there's some interior well the interior basically is just limited to the bleach and so forth of the cannon and that's about it i don't remember the marking options i believe the marking options i've kind of lost had a flood recently, as I think I mentioned in a previous episode. So some uh, paperwork and so forth and boxes got destroyed. So, but uh, pretty much just standard green was the color. This is a slightly darker color, I think, uh, than I've used before for Russian tanks. But yeah, it's it's generally like a dark green. And uh, now you can even get with, uh, I forget which one it is, I don't know if it's Vallejo. If someone's got the uh, 4BO spray paint available for Russian armor, which if you really uh, want the exact color, you can get that. And I've used that and it's kind of handy. It's kind of nice to have. Um, so there's an option. So you'll see that it's got the basic uh, chassis system and wheels that are typical of the Soviet light tanks of the period. Kind of just a continuation of the T-60 and T-70 with the storage boxes, the front uh, opening hatch there, 
for the driver, although the designs of this hatch here, you know, changed quite a bit from model to model. So this one's got a slightly rounder, softer look to it than some of the other variations of the hatches. And in fact, I'll show you a couple of them in a moment. It's got that twin exhaust muffler thing going on. And you can see the engine uh, screens are there. Just going to put a uh, spare wheel on the back here. And that's pretty much where I am with this. And then I'm going to weather it. So, you know, I've already put the markings on. Generally, just standard green and number if it had one. And that's kind of it for this. And I suppose you could do winter uh, paint schemes, although I guess. <laughs> but this is in, you know, late in the wars. So this is 44, 45 during those last drives through uh eastern europe you know into into um yeah into germany so it does mention like that these had gone into the battles of hungary so i have a pretty good oops i got a little damage on this book here but is this which is a fun book and i'm a big fan of uh, light tanks and russian light tanks i, I tend to enjoy quite a bit uh and I kind of prefer these over the bigger Russian monsters <laughs> from World War II. I just happen to like the early ones, and like the T-26, the VT-7. And even though this doesn't say it's got the T-80 in it, it, it actually does. And it is at the very last page. <laughs> so there's your T-80. There's one surviving one left in, uh, in Russia, in the museum there. There's a schematic drawing on top there. So, it says the last Soviet production light tank built during the war, derived from the T-70M, as I just mentioned that. And what else we got here? Yeah, so here's one period photo just has it in the standard green. That's a T-70 here, the winter T-70 tank on this page. So it doesn't say a whole lot here other than, you know, that the, the cannon needed to fire on both upper floors and buildings. Yeah, T-80s. Okay, so the production was stopped in late 1943. Okay. Uh, only 75 vehicles were built. And f yeah, because production ended up switching over to the SU-76M self-propelled artillery piece instead of these. I guess that makes sense. So, and they were, you know, used by armored brigades and regiments, mixed organizations. And let's see, anything else here? Yada, yada, yada. Just says that these were better than the T-70 series. It was just operated better than the light tanks of the Germans and the Czechs that, uh, that they were using those um, chassis systems. The Germans are still using the, the Czech system. And these tended to be more um, successful than that. And it says the T-80s are fielded in different units where the T-70s would have operated and they were used in combat 44 to 45. And it says, for instance, one T-80 was in service with the 5th Guards Tank Brigade in 1945 during the operations in Hungary. So, here's your brief history of that. Again, another winner in my mind from Mini Art. This is a lot of fun to put together. Still working on a few final details on here, but a joy to build. I am, like I said, I am finding some of the newer kits to be bigger with lots of pieces, lots of materials, a lot more challenging. Yeah, this is missing. Yeah, no, it isn't. There's pretty much the instructions here. Yeah, it was a link. Yeah, link by link treads doesn't really give you a whole lot. Just shows that that's how it's done there. And this is what I was talking about for the T70 and T80 series, that the front hatch tended to change, different types. 
And what I'm working on now is trying to get a crewman in there. We'll see how this works. Yeah, there he is. There he goes. Because I thought this guy fit in pretty well. Let you guys be the judge of that. I thought that was not a bad fit for the figure. And that's a Tamiya figure. And that's from this set right here. This guy right here. Anyway, so that's a quick look at the T70. Oh, no, I'm sorry, the T80. <laughs> and at some point in the future, I hope to talk about the more modern T80, but that'll be an upcoming episode. Okay, stay tuned for that in the future. And as a look at this Russian tank crew from Tamiya. All right, keep on building, have fun. Yeah, T80. <laughs> we'll see you soon.